So this is going to be a quick one. I was asked to troubleshoot why a character wasn't cycling through an attack animation. So you haven't missed anything. This is just the default camera when you create a new project. And all I did was drag and drop in the images that I'm going to use just to save a little time. So you haven't missed any coding or really any relevant setup. So let's start by creating our empty object. And we'll just rename this hero. Click on them. Go to Add Component. Go to Miscellaneous and click on Animator. Now what we want to do is we're going to click on Animation. And we're going to add a new clip. We'll call this Idle. Now due to timing, I wasn't able to draw out a full Idle animation. So it's actually only going to have one frame, but functionally one frame, uh, or should I say one image that's repeated for multiple frames, one image that's repeated for multiple frames, effectively it's the same thing. So it's not going to look like it's animated, but as you can see there are multiple frames there. It's just the same image. So we unclick that so we've saved it. Now we're going to click on this, create a new clip, and we'll call this one attack. This time we're going to take all of them except the first frame. All I did was click on the first, hold shift, grab the last. Typical Windows group select. All I did was change the frame rate. And I'm just dragging and dropping. I click once and then drag and drop. That way I always know where I am. Because if you don't click first, if you just do that, the highlight reverts back to where you were. So it takes an extra second, but click to make sure you're not missing any frames. Okay, so now you have your two animations. You have idle and you have attack. Now, if you go to animator, you might have to add this tab at the top. You can add tab just by right clicking and choose an add tab. This one that's highlighted in orange, that means it's the default, which means that if you don't tell it to do anything, this is what it's going to default to. You can change the default by just right clicking and choosing set as default. In this case, we want the idle to be the default. Now to transition between two different animations, you right click and you choose make transition and then you just drag over to where you want it to go and click. And then of course you don't want it to stay there, so you right click, make transitions and go back. Now by default, the reason why, or the trigger shall we say, why it goes from one animation to the other is time. So if you click on the transition, you can see the arrows pointing this way. It says exit time. We're not going to want exit time. So what we do is we create a par parameter and we'll call this hero attack and we'll have it be trigger type. Now if we come here to exit time, it'll be there. Hero attack. It's a trigger so there's no condition over there. Triggers are just yes or no. Now if we click on the transition line from attack to idle, exit time is fine and the actual time doesn't matter. It'll exit when it's done. Okay, so now we're going to click on our hero. And what we're going to do is we're going to add a script. We'll call this hero control. Now I'm going to open a text file, don't worry, I'm going to explain everything. It's just that I find that when I do these videos, I waste so much time making simple mistakes. So I'd rather just cut and paste, and it saves a little bit of time too, as long as I give a good explanation. So first thing we have to do is create our variables. There are going to be two. One is we have to create a variable for the animator. 
and we'll just call it andum, you can call it whatever you want, and a public key code because the request says to uh, trigger the animation based on attack. So that's just two variables, one for the animator, one for the key code. And this is actually really quite simple. In the update section, if parenthesis input dot get key down parenthesis and then the name of this variable and then close parenthesis close parenthesis. So this is saying it's looking for input, specifically what kind of input when the key is down. Now this is important because you can do get key, get key down, get key up. And there's reasons for that. You might be looking to do a rapid fire. So you just want any kind of keystroke or maybe you only want it to happen once. Get key down only occurs the frame that the key is down. Same thing for get key up. It only happens once the key has been released. So uh, depending if you're looking for a rapid fire or a one off, that would determine which one you would use. Now here's the variable we set up here, anim, so we're saying the animator, set trigger, hero attack. So what you're saying is go out to the animator, here's the trigger that we use to combine these two, set it to attack, set hero attack to be true is basically what you're saying. By doing that it will transfer them from idle to attack and they'll go back from attack to idle because of time. Now let's click on our hero and we have to do a couple things. First let's actually save this and now the variable should appear over here. So attack one, go scroll all the way down to the bottom, we're going to use mouse zero which is the left mouse button. If you're using the keyboard like say you're doing like an MMO, maybe you want it to map to the keys, entirely your choice, functionally there's no difference. It's just a matter of choosing what the assigned key is. Now for the animator, you just click on the little icon next to anim, select the right animator, it's hero, and that should do it if I haven't forgotten anything. I'm going to click, and she attacked. So I realize this is incredibly bare bones, but since I don't know the context really of the request, I wanted this to be as bare bones as possible. That way it'd be easiest for them to integrate it into their system. So that should do it. That's how you cycle through an animation, in this case based on a mouse click.